The Oryx is the South African cousin of the French SA-330 Puma, or in terms of its capabilities, the AS-332 Super Puma. Its development history remains shrouded in mystery, accompanied by numerous questionable claims. As the weapon detective, we're now investigating the Oryx, a wildcat that has evolved into an antelope. The Oryx is an intriguing helicopter. Despite having served for over 30 years, many aspects of how South Africa created this rotorcraft remains mysterious, accompanied by numerous allegations. Nonetheless, witnessing this more handsome and capable cousin of the Puma in the skies has always been a delight for aviation enthusiasts. To better understand this adventure, we should examine the Roy Falk program and the significance of the SA-330 in the advancements of South African aviation industry. Until the early 1980s, the South African border war resembled a counterinsurgency operation more than a conventional war. However, the growing number of tanks, armored vehicles, attack helicopters and air defense systems in the Cuban and Angolan forces altered the situation. As a result, the South African Defense Force, or SADF, required a dedicated attack helicopter to escort troop transports, strike enemy anti-aircraft positions, and counter enemy armored units and rotary wing aircraft. South Africa was under a United Nations arms embargo due to its apartheid policy and could not acquire such a system from abroad. It had to execute the project indigenously. Atlas Aircraft Corporation, now known as Dianol Aeronautics, commenced the development work in 1984. This company had modernized 19 SA-330Hs to L standards as a part of the country's helicopter industrialization program launched in 1978. Furthermore, it had gained significant capability to manufacture the most critical components for in-service Alouette threes and Pumas. Creating an entirely new attack helicopter from scratch would have required designing and developing numerous associated subsystems and components such as turboshaft engines and dynamic systems including the main and tail rotor systems, as well as gearboxes. It would be time-consuming and costly. Therefore, South Africa opted to base the attack helicopter on a pre-existing design. First, Atlas Aircraft developed an experimental attack helicopter, the XH-1 Alpha, derived from the Alouette 3. Subsequently, the company built the more powerful XTP-1 by converting two Pumas. The helicopter made its maiden flight in 1986. These prototypes led to the creation of the Roy Falk. Atlas Aircraft quickly recognized the potential for a localized and improved version of the Puma derived from the attack helicopter program. South Africa employed the SA-330s in Rhodesia, Namibia and Angola extensively. They demonstrated their value, particularly during Operation Super in 1982 and Operation Mebos in 1983. These helicopters also formed the backbone of the SADF's Rapid Reaction Forces. However, such an extensive operational career inevitably led to the fast wear and tear. Consequently, Atlas Aircraft converted a single Puma to the Oryx configuration by utilizing Roy Falk's engine and gearbox. This prototype made its maiden flight on September 18, 1987. The helicopter exceeded all expectations during trials. The Oryx program advanced swiftly as it required fewer modifications to the existing Puma than the Roy Falk. Deliveries began in May 1989. One year later, licensed production of the Turbomica Makila 1A1 commenced under the name Topaz. The existence of the Oryx was made public in 1991. The program, featuring upgraded and newly built aircraft, was completed in 1995. Unlike Puma's all-metal structure, the Oryx utilizes composite materials, resulting in a lighter and more robust airframe that enhances endurance and maneuverability. They also improve corrosion resistance. Its newly modified tail boom is 0.5 meters longer than that of the SA-330. Each of the two Topaz turboshaft possesses a 1,877 shaft horsepower rating for maximum contingency and a 1,589 shaft horsepower rating for maximum continuous operation. The gearbox rating stands at 3,008 shaft horsepower. Thanks to its lighter airframe and higher power output, 
The Aurax offered 25 to 30% better performance than the Puma, particularly in hot and high conditions. Furthermore, its operating costs are 25 to 30% lower than those of its French predecessor. If one of the engines failed during flight, the management system automatically increases the power setting on the remaining one. Thus, the helicopter can stay airborne with minimal crew input during such an emergency. The dust filters on the earlier examples have since been replaced with a newly designed one. The helicopter's in-ground effect and out-of-ground effect hover ceilings are 6,250 and 5,490 meters, respectively. In comparison to the SA-330, the Aurax boasts an increased fuel capacity and can also be equipped with two Sponson tanks, each holding 350 liters, and for ferrying purposes, up to four auxiliary tanks in the cabin. The main rotor is foldable. The helicopter, featuring enhanced crew survivability, can transport 16 fully equipped troops in their seats or 20 soldiers on the floor should the seats be removed. It can be fitted with door-mounted 7.62mm mag machine guns. The Aurax can carry a maximum payload of 3000 kg in the cabin or up to 4500 kg of freight on an external sling. In medevac missions, the helicopter can accommodate 6 stretchers plus 4 seats for medical personnel or seated patients. The cockpit features displays redesigned for single pilot operation and is compatible with night vision goggles. The Bandix 1400B weather radar located in the nose thimble possesses ground mapping capability. The helicopter is also equipped with GPS navigation and an autopilot. For self-defense, the Aurax is fitted with radar and missile approach warning systems as well as flare dispensers. Aurax's operating from coastal squadrons and maritime missions are fitted with emergency flotation gear on the sponsons and nose. In 2006, the South African National Defense Force or SANDF initiated a midlife upgrade program for the helicopter. However, due to ongoing budgetary constraints, the government restricted the project's scope to life extensions for the airframe while permitting limited updates to both the communications and navigation suites. The Aurax has a three-person crew and can carry up to 20 passengers. It has a length of 18.74 meters, a rotor diameter of 15.6 meters and a height of 5.14 meters. The helicopter's empty and maximum takeoff weights are 3,600 and 8,400 kilograms respectively. Two 1,877 shaft horsepower Topaz turboshaft engines provide a top speed of 305 kilometers per hour. Its cruising speed is 282 km per hour. The helicopter's range is 2,000 km. It can climb to an altitude of 7,160 meters, in other words, 23,500 feet. The South African Air Force, or SAAF, has equipped at least one Aurax with the GSY 1500 communications band jamming system and an associated deployable log periodic antenna for comet missions. The Aurax M is the version designed for Coast Guard missions. Operated by the SAAF, the Aurax M1 is the variant employed for supplying naval ships. South Africa possesses two Aurax M2 designed for cold weather operations. This variant was specifically designed for use by the Department of Environmental Affairs and Tourism as a part of South African National Antarctic Program, however, the SAAF operates it. The South African border war concluded in 1990 and the Aurax had no opportunity to demonstrate its capabilities there. Nevertheless, South Africa deployed the helicopter in the Democratic Republic of the Congo to support UN-led peacekeeping operations in the country. On May 4, 2001, one Aurax was hit by small arms fire, which penetrated its internal fuel tank and caused a minor fuel leak. However, it was able to reach the airport safely. On September 4, 2018, the rotors of another Aurax were damaged as the helicopter attempted to evade ground fire. The incident on February 5, 2023, however, was not as fortunate as the previous ones. The ground fire injured the pilot and caused the flight engineer to lose his life. Nevertheless, the crew managed to land the helicopter safely at the airport. Although South Africa has insisted that the Aurax was an indigenous program developed by Atlas itself, we cannot easily overlook some strong opposing claims. At first glance, the allegations seem reasonable, as this SA-330-based helicopter shares similar features and lines with the short variant of the AS-332. 
The UN imposed a mandatory arms embargo against South Africa in 1977 because of its apartheid regime. However, the term mandatory has never been binding in matters of international affairs. Although the public in Western nations opposed segregation, their governments were willing to support a country fighting against communists. In these situations, bypassing an embargo through a backdoor rarely poses a significant issue. Moreover, selling military equipment to a country under an arms embargo is often more lucrative than under normal circumstances. In such situations, since the UN does not compensate the supplier nation's commercial losses, producers are generally more inclined to utilize backdoors readily. Henny van Fieren, the director of Open Secrets, a South African non-profit organization that holds powerful private actors accountable for economic crimes, assert that his country arranged the purchase of 66 AS-332 Super Pumas from Eurospecial. After production in France, they were dismantled for transport and subsequently handed over to the Portuguese Air Force, which was officially the final operator. However, Portugal transferred them to South Africa via a local intermediary where Atlas aircraft reassembled them under the name of Oryx. Another source claims that Aerospecial was the original designer of the Oryx. It supplied 50 kits to South Africa via a Portuguese company as spare parts for the existing Puma fleet of the SAAF. Another assertion is that Portugal agreed with South Africa to evade the UN embargo following France's refusal to supply upgrades and spare parts. In the clandestine deal, this country sent the kits through a Zyra-based company. Even Jane's aircraft upgrades asserted that Romania, which produced the SA-330 under license as the IAR-330, supplied 50 airframe kits to South Africa for the Oryxes. So far, none of these allegations have been proven. We should consider that South Africa launched its helicopter industry in 1978 and made significant progress in this field rapidly. This country's advancements in defense technologies during the 1970s and 1980s were also quite remarkable. Therefore, South Africa possessed the essential infrastructure and skilled human resources to carry out the Oryx project independently. Interestingly, no one makes such allegations regarding the more sophisticated Roy Falk program. According to our analysis, the most probable scenario is that South Africa may have received technical support for only some parts at most. Some of these allegations might have logical foundations, but they do not seem likely. Thus, we can affirm that the Oryx is indeed the South African cousin of the Puma, rather than a product of dubious collaborations. Thanks for watching our video, and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.